So in today's video, we're gonna be going over the best credit cards for 2023. This is going to be a very comprehensive list. So if you're looking for the best credit cards for beginners, cashback, travel, or whatever it is, I got you covered in this video. What's up winners? My name is Nam. If you're new here, welcome. Here we talk all things personal finance and credit, starting out by subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. All of the cards that I will be talking about are not in any particular order. These are just my top picks for that specific category. Before I dive into the list, all of the categories will be timestamped down below. Also remember welcome bonuses and intro offers change all the time. So before you sign up, just make sure that it makes sense for you. Now let's start off with the best credit cards for beginners or students. The first one will be the Discover It card. This card is a great choice for beginners or students who are looking for a credit card with no annual fees and rewards for their spending. Here are some of the benefits and perks of this card. This card offers 5% cash back up to $1,500 in purchases in rotating categories each quarter, as well as 1% cash back on other purchases. Plus, Discover will match all the cash back rewards earned within the first year. This card has no annual fee, which makes it a good option for beginners or students who are just starting to build credit. In addition, this card has no foreign transaction fees, which makes it a good travel companion. The next card in this category will be the City Custom Cash Rewards card. This is another great option for beginners or students who are looking for a credit card with no annual fee and rewards for their spending. This card offers 5% cash back up to $500 in purchases each billing cycle, as well as 1% cash back on all other purchases. So unlike many other rotating category cards, the way this card will work is that you will earn 5% cash back on the areas that you spend the most in. So currently with this card, it offers a $200 welcome bonus after you spend $1,500 within the first three months. Now let's talk about an honorable mention which is any bank that you have a relationship with. Most banks or credit unions will have some sort of internal score for each one of its members. So if you have direct deposit or a savings account, this will earn you more brownie points. So starting with a credit card where you already bank is usually much easier. So the next categories are for those who have bad credit or in the process of rebuilding their credit. And you probably will know that in this stage, it's usually pretty difficult to get a credit card from one of the major issuers. So the first card in this category will be a credit card from Cred AI. So this is the perfect card for those who want to build credit, but don't want to have the credit pulled or the fear of going into debt. So with this credit card, it will report to the credit bureaus that you have a $1,500 credit limit, even if you don't really have one. The way this card is set up is that it is impossible to become late with this card. The reason being is that your spending limit is set by how much money is in your Cred AI checking account. So it's kind of works more like a debit card than anything. Some things that I do really like about this card is that there are plenty of pretty neat features such as having virtual private cards, approve or deny certain transactions before they actually happen, and if you have their checking account, you can actually get your paychecks two days earlier. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the Mission Lane credit card. With this card, you can see if you can get approved without a hit on your credit report. Since this is a credit building card, there are no perks or welcome offers, and it does have an annual fee up to $59 per year, depending on your credit. So I would only recommend this card for the short term. If you are having problems getting approved for a credit card, then why not take the chance just to see? So as a side note, I do have plenty of credit building videos in my library. If you wanna check them out, they'll be down in the description or you can find them up here. So as an honorable mention, try to target credit unions. The reason being is that most credit unions will probably have secure cards or a lower barrier to entry to get one of the cards. Now let's move on to our next category, which is cash back. These are for those who rather get money. So the way I look at this is just a rebate on all of your purchases. The first credit card in this category is a card that we already mentioned before, which will be the City Custom Cash Card. The reason being is that you get 5% cash back on purchases in your highest eligible spend category each billing cycle, up to $500 spent. Then after that, it will just be an unlimited 1% cash back on all other purchases. This one is a little bit better for those who wanna have a dedicated card for a certain amount of spend, whether it be gas, groceries, then this card could be for you. But if you spend more than $500 in that category, then there may be some better choices out there. So currently with this card, you can get $200 cash back out of spending $1,500 in purchases within the first six months, and you also get a low intro APR of 0% for the first 15 months. Moving on to the next card that I do recommend will be the Alliant Cashback Visa. With this credit card, you can earn 2.5% cash back up to $10,000 in monthly purchases. This is probably one of the most aggressive cashback offers compared to the normal 2% cashback cards. 
with this card, there's also no foreign transaction fees, and it typically does come with a generous credit line. So you would have to have excellent credit to get this card, but the thing about the cashback is that you can only redeem them at minimums of $25 increments. All right, so now let's move on to our next category, which will be the best no annual fee travel credit cards. I'm always down for no fees. These cards are best for those who want to dab into travel hacking or essentially traveling for free using points and miles. And more importantly, with all of these travel cards, there are no foreign transaction fees, which is a must have. The first one in this category will be the Wells Fargo Autograph card. With this card, it will earn you 3x points, not only on travel, but also on dining, gas, streaming, and phone services. Aside from those, it also earns 1x points on all other purchases. At the making of this video, there's also a 20,000 bonus point offer once you spend $1,000 within the first three months. That's a $200 cash value. There's also no annual fee, and there's a 0% intro APR for the first 12 months. Even though this one has a high earning rate for travel, Unfortunately, the points don't transfer. The next card in this category will be the Built MasterCard. If you have ever heard of this card before, they're mainly known for being able to pay for rent without incurring any extra processing fees. But besides that point, it also makes for an excellent travel credit card. You get 3x points on dining and 2x points on travel. They also have this thing called Rent Day where you can double your points on the first of each month meaning that you can get 6x on dining and 4x on travel. But what makes this card very powerful is that they have some great transfer partners. Some of these include American Airlines, Hyatt, and United. Most travel credit cards that have transfer partners usually have an annual fee, but Built does not. Now let's move on to our mid-tier travel credit cards. These are the type of credit cards where you can expect an annual fee ranging anywhere between $50 to $100. The first card on the list will be the Chase Sapphire Preferred Credit Card. This card is pretty well known, but for a good reason. Currently, you can earn 60,000 bonus points whenever you spend $4,000 in purchases within the first three months of the account opening. This equals to $750 on travel whenever you redeem it through the Chase portal or $600 if you were to redeem it as cash back. Additionally, you get a $50 annual hotel credit when you use to book a hotel through the Chase travel portal. Now let's talk about how you can earn more rewards. You get 5X on travel, hotels, and car rentals booked through the Chase travel portal, 3X on dining, and 2X on all other travel purchases and you get 1x on other purchases. Another good thing about this card is that it does provide primary car rental insurance, meaning that if you were to rent a car through Hertz, you can deny coverage since Chase Sapphire Preferred is one of those few cards that will cover your rental rather than going through your own personal insurance. This card will be the barrier to entry for Chase Travel Partners. Essentially, you need to have a card like this to be able to transfer the points out to different partners. I honestly think this is probably one of the best entry-level travel credit cards out there, even if they have an annual fee of $95. The next card in this category will be the Capital One Venture Rewards Credit Card. With this credit card, you can get a bonus of 75,000 miles once you spend $4,000 on purchases within the first three months of the account opening, and this equals to about $750 in travel. This is a great overall card since you can earn an unlimited 2x miles on every purchase every day. Not only that, you can receive up to $100 credit for global entry or TSA pre-check. With the opening of the new Capital One lounges, this card will allow you to give you two complimentary visits per year or access to the Plaza Premium Lounges through their partnered lounge network. Now let's move on to the more premium travel credit cards. Usually these cards have annual fees of around $400 and up. The first one in this category will be the MX Platinum card. This one is an obvious choice due to the fact that the welcome offer is ridiculously high. So at the current moment, you can get a bonus ranging anywhere between 100 or up to 150,000 points depending on the link that you use. There are a whole lot of perks that come along with this card, so I'm just gonna cover some of the key highlights. You can get up to $200 of Uber credits annually, 240 digital entertainment credit, Walmart Plus credit, $200 airline fee credit, and Centurion lounge access. I honestly think MX have some of the best lounges, but unfortunately, you can no longer bring guests that are complimentary and they would have to pay or if you add them as authorized users. Now, let's talk about earning points. You can earn 5x points on flights up to $500,000 per calendar year, 5x points on prepaid hotels booked through MX Travel, and 1x points on all other eligible purchases. The thing about membership reward points is that if you want to get the maximum value, you will need to use them towards travel. In most cases, if you were to transfer to travel partners, you can get anywhere between two to three cents per point. So with this high of an annual fee, you gotta make sure that you use all the perks and benefits that are available to you so you can offset that fee. So the next card on the list will be the Capital One Venture X credit card. I honestly think this is probably one of the best premium travel credit cards out there. Even though this credit card does have an annual fee of $395, Capital One can be paying you $5 just to keep the card 
And let me show you why. First off, there is a bonus of 75,000 miles whenever you spend $4,000 within the first three months. And this is equivalent to $750 in travel. How this becomes a keeper card is that you will receive $300 back annually as statement credits for bookings through their travel portal. And you get 10,000 bonus miles, which is equal to $100 of travel every year starting on your first anniversary. So with the annual statement credit plus the 10,000 bonus miles, Effectively in year two, you'll be getting paid $5 just to keep this card. Some other rewards that you get is 10X miles on hotels and rentals and 5X miles on flights booked through the travel portal. You also get 2X miles on all other purchases. You also get access to Capital One and partner lounges. And lastly, you can receive a $100 credit for global entry or TSA pre-check. Now let's move on to talking about hotel credit cards. The thing about these kind of cards is that you really have to think which hotels that you mostly stay in. I think it's best to stick to like two major hotel chains so you can get higher status easier if you stay there a lot. One of the biggest things that makes me consider a hotel credit card is that if it offers free annual nights, because usually that free night stay will make up for an annual fee if there is one. So the first card on this list will be the Hilton Honors Aspire card. This one has a high annual fee, but I think the card is worth it. So let me break it down. Whenever you first sign up for this card, you can earn 150,000 Hilton Honor bonus points after spending $4,000 in purchases within the first three months. But I think the best perk that comes along with this card is that you can get diamond status, which is the highest status that you can get with Hilton. This gives you access to complimentary suite upgrades, lounge access for free food and drinks, and late checkout. I have been staying at Hilton Properties a little bit more, and I must say that every time I requested an upgrade, I have gotten one even though I was just a gold member. So as a diamond member, you do have priority when there is space available. Some other perks you get are a $250 Hilton Resort credit, $250 airline fee credit, and a $100 property credit at the Ward of Astoria or Conrad Hotels. The next card on the list will be the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant MX. This one was a tough one because I wasn't sure if I should pick this card or the Chase Marriott Bonvoy Boundless. I know that both of these hotel cards or for different audiences and have a huge differences in annual fees, but let's go over why I picked this card over the other. This card does have a massive annual fee of $650, but there are some ways to offset this fee a little bit more. First off, there is a welcome offer of 95,000 bonus points after you spend $5,000 within the first three months. This is a pretty good bonus because you can stay at one of their luxury hotels or a couple nights at a low to mid tier property. You also get a $300 dining statement credit, which comes at a $25 per month. This perk is kind of whatever, but if you are a person who does eat out and spend at least $25 a month, then I don't think you should have a problem using this benefit. Another way to offset the annual fee is by taking advantage of the annual free night that's worth up to 85,000 points. You can find many properties that you can get way more value than $350. So if you're gonna be staying at least one of these properties once a year, then you could definitely offset that fee. So I would just look at the credit and the annual night as a coupon that you would just have to use later. Where this gets a little bit more interesting is that you can get platinum status. This is where the fun happens if you are a person who frequents Marriott hotels. This is where you can get suite upgrades, hotel lounge access, and late checkout. There are plenty of hotel credit cards out there, so you really gotta find one that tailors towards your needs. Now let's move on to talk about airline credit cards. With these credit cards, these are very similar to the hotel cards, since they are very personalized to your traveling habits. So you really have to find one that has some sort of presence at your local airport, because if you don't fly Southwest, then it really makes no sense to get a Southwest credit card or any airline for that matter. So with my recommendations, see if there's any cards on the list that would work for you. First on the list will be the Alaska Airlines Visa card. So there's also a business version of this card. So if you can get both, that would be a great duo. But anyways, with the personal card, you currently can get 70,000 bonus miles Plus you're gonna get a companion fare, which starts at $122. So to get the bonus, you would have to spend at least $3,000 or more within the first 90 days. Like with most airline cards, you get priority boarding and a free check back. Unfortunately, this card does have an annual fee of $95. So if the benefits are worth it to you, then you can offset it. The next airline card that I would recommend would be the United Explorer card. Currently, you can earn 50,000 bonus miles after spending $3,000 within the first three months. Some other perks include 2X miles on United Airline purchases, dining, and hotel stays. You also get your first check bag for free for yourself and one companion that's traveling on the same reservation. But not only that, you also get a $100 statement credit for global entry or TSA pre-check. The good thing about this card is that this card typically does have an annual fee of $95, but currently it is waived for the first year. All right, so now let's move on to our next category, which is dining. This includes eating out, 
takeout orders or food delivery. There are plenty of good dining credit cards out there. So this is what I've narrowed it down to. The first card that we will be talking about will be the American Express Gold Card. At the making of this video, you can earn 60,000 membership reward points as you spend $4,000 in eligible purchases within the first six months. Sometimes you can actually find the welcome offer up to 90,000 points. Now let's move on to how you can earn more points. You earn 4x points on restaurants worldwide, including takeout and delivery. You also earn 4x points at US supermarkets up to $25,000 per calendar year. After that, it will just be 1x. You also get 3x points on flights booked directly through airlines or American Express Travel. Now, here's the kicker. You get $240 of dining credits per year. You get $10 a month for Uber and a $10 credit for Grubhub or a partner restaurant. The downside is that there is an annual fee of $250. So if you were to maximize a dining credit and spend at least $250 or more on food or groceries, then you would break even. I would only recommend this card if you can use the credits and want to maximize membership reward points. The next card on the list will be the Capital One Saver One Rewards card. This one is very similar to the MX Gold in a sense because it has very strong rewards on dining and grocery stores. So with this credit card, you can earn an unlimited 3% cash back on dining, entertainment, streaming services, grocery stores, then after that, it would just be 1% on all other purchases. There's also a welcome offer of $200 cash bonus once you spend $500 within the first three months, and you can also get a 0% intro APR for the first 15 months. The great thing about this card is that there's no annual fee unlike the MX Gold. Most credit cards do offer some sort of gas benefits, but typically they range anywhere between two to 3% back, but there are some ones that you can earn much more. The first one will be the Abound Credit Union Visa Platinum Credit Card. With this card, it gives you 5% cash back on all gas purchases, and there's no limit on how much you can earn. Unlike most credit unions, there's no strict requirements to become a member. All you have to do is pay a $10 membership fee. And since this card has no annual fee, it is worth keeping for the long term. But on the downsides, there is no sign up bonus, and on other purchases, it's only 1%. So if you want a dedicated gas card, then this one will be for you. The next card on the list will be the PenFed Platinum Rewards Visa Signature Card. Even though this credit union is targeted towards military individuals, it is not that hard to become a member. All you gotta do is apply and open a checking or savings account and deposit $5. So with this card, you earn five points at gas stations, three points at supermarkets, and one point on all other purchases. The thing about this credit card is that one point is actually worth around 0.85 cents, meaning that that 5X back on gas is technically worth 4.25. Now let's talk about our honorable mention, which will be the City Costco credit card. This one earns 4% cash back on the first $7,000 spent on gas. Additionally, you can earn 3% cash back at restaurants and on travel. Even though this credit card does not have an annual fee, you still need to be a Costco member to get one. The reason why this is an honorable mention is that it may not apply to everyone since not everybody has a Costco membership. Plus the cash back is only rewarded once a year. Now let's move on to our next category, which is online shopping. Since Amazon is the leader in the e-commerce space, I would highly recommend getting the Amazon Prime Rewards Visa Signature Card. This is only if you have an Amazon Prime account. If you do not, then you can just get the regular Amazon Rewards Card. But right now, I'm just gonna focus on the Amazon Prime Visa. With this credit card, you can earn 5% cash back on purchases made at Amazon and at Whole Foods. Additionally, you can earn 2% cash back at restaurants and gas stations, and 1% cash back on everything else. From time to time, you can also get bonus rewards at Amazon up to 10% back. Even though this credit card does not have an annual fee, you still do need an Amazon Prime account to keep this card active. At the making of this video, if you were to sign up for this card, you can get a $100 gift card, which is pretty nice. The other card in this category will be the Bank of America Customized Cash Rewards Card. The key reason behind this is that you can select 3% cash back on online purchases. This means on all online online shopping. Not many cards out there do allow this. In addition, you can get 2% cash back on groceries and wholesale clubs, and you also get 1% cash back on everything else. But the caveat is that the 2 and 3% categories can only be earned up to $2,500 per quarter. But if you are a preferred rewards member, you can get a better cash back rate. So right now they have a $200 bonus after spending $1,000 within the first 90 days, and they have a zero intro APR for the first 18 months. Now moving on to our next category, which will be credit cards that offer rotating categories. So with these type of credit cards, they typically offer a higher percentage back, such as 5% cash back per quarter. 
But the thing about these cards is that you really have to be on top of your game and know when to use a card correctly to maximize that 5% cash back. The first card on this list will be the Chase Freedom Flex card. This is still one of my favorite cards right now. At the making of this video, you can earn a $200 bonus after spending $500 on purchases within the first three months. You get 5% cash back up to $1,500 in purchases in bonus categories each quarter that you activate. The key here is that you have to activate. Additionally, you earn 5% cash back on travel that's purchased through Chase, 3% cash back on dining and drug stores, and 1% cash back on everything else. And the best part is that there's no annual fee. The next credit card in this category will be the Discover It cash back. Also with this card, you can earn 5% cash back on rotating categories. Other than that, you also earn 1% cash back on all other purchases, and you can also get a cash back match for all of your cash back that you earn by the end of the year automatically. Additionally, this is a great credit card to keep for the long term since there is no annual fee. Now let's move on to our next category, which is one of my favorites, which is talking about sign up bonuses or welcome offers. So the way I categorize the cards in this section is the value of the sign up bonus in regards to the amount of the minimum spend plus the annual fee. These do change all the time. So whenever you watch this video, just make sure that it is the highest one out. Also keep in mind that MX cards do have a once in a lifetime bonus. The first card on the list will be the MX Platinum card. This card was previously mentioned, but nonetheless, this card does offer a great welcome offer. You can get 100 up to 150,000 membership reward points after you spend $6,000 within the first six months. The annual fee is high, but there could be enough credits to offset it. Next will be the American Express Gold. Now you can get offers for this card ranging anywhere between 60 to 90,000 points after spending $4,000 within the first six months. There is an annual fee of $250, but there are plenty of dining credits that can help offset this. This is usually the workhorse in your daily rotation since you can get 4X back on dining and groceries. Now let's talk about my overall top picks. These will be my daily drivers. These are the cards that I will recommend keeping in my wallet on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm a huge fan of no annual fee credit cards, just mainly due to the fact that annual fees offset a lot of the cashback or points that you can possibly earn unless you make use of the benefits or perks of that card. The first one will be the Chase Freedom Unlimited. The reason why I think most people would enjoy this card is due to the fact that it is in a Chase ecosystem. It gives you the opportunity to earn more points towards travel if you're into that type of thing, Plus, you can get 3% back at dining and drugstores, and on top of that, you can get 1.5% cash back on everything else. Now, this is not as good as 2% compared to other cards, but it does give you some more flexibility to earn more depending on the categories. The next credit card that I think is excellent will be the Capital One Venture X card. Yes, this card does have an annual fee of $395, but it does give you enough credits and benefits and actually makes you $5 just by holding the card. The welcome offer is pretty generous, not as good as what it used to be, but 75,000 miles after spending $4,000 on purchases within the first 90 days is pretty good. But since they give you 10,000 anniversary bonus miles plus $300 annual travel credits, it kind of forces you to spend on travel, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're gonna be doing it anyways. With Flounge Access, this card is a good travel companion. So there you guys have it. This is a large roundup of all of my top credit cards in the particular categories. So again, these are just my own personal picks of what I think is best. So depending on your spending habits and what you plan to do, but nonetheless, I'm glad that you made it this far. If you wanna learn more about credit cards and credit, make sure you check out these videos over here.